In this SY3 screencast, we're going to look at Marxist theories of power and the state. And hopefully by the end of this screencast, you'll feel confident that you're able to describe Marxist theories of power and the state. And also towards the end of this presentation, we're going to look at some criticisms to help you begin to evaluate this perspective. And we can see here that there was 45 mark questions specifically on Marxist explanations of power in the January 2013 paper and to be honest this whole topic about the distribution of power is probably the topic that comes up the most often uh, on exam papers. So let's begin with an image. Have a look at the picture and see if you can answer the question. What does this picture suggest about the Marxist model of power in the state. So hit the pause button and see if you can come up with an answer. So hopefully you're able to work out what the picture uh, is about. This is meant to be a building and these are the foundations of the building. But this image is also meant to represent the Marxist theory. For Marxists of course the foundation of any society is its economic base. So for Marxist sociologists, if you want to understand any aspect of society, you need to begin by looking at how production is organised. You need to begin by looking at the economic structure of society, which shapes and influences all of the other institutions that we find within society, including the political institutions. So this means, from a Marxist perspective, that ultimately political power is derived from economic power. In other words, the group that owns society is also the group that controls it politically. And this means that Marxists argue that within a capitalist economic structure, power comes from ownership and control of the means of production and is therefore in the hands of a minority capitalist ruling class. To borrow a slogan from the Occupy movement, the argument here is that the 1% of the population who own the majority of the corporate wealth control the political system. Now if we look at this quote here, John Dewey was by no means a Marxist, in fact he was a, a liberal philosopher, but I think this quotation from John Dewey neatly summarises the Marxist view of politics. Politics is the shadow cast on society by big business. And that, for me, really is the Marxist view in a nutshell. So I think some of the slogans of the Occupy Wall Street movement uh, are really in step with the Marxist perspective. This idea that you've got 99% of the population who are controlled by the richest 1%. This idea that the political system and the state within America has been captured by uh, the interests of the financial elites. Now, for the exam, in order to get a good mark, it's important to identify and explain at least two different types of Marxisms. We've got, on the one hand, a perspective called instrumental Marxism, uh, associated with the work of Ralph Miliband. And on the other hand, we've got a perspective called structuralist Marxism, associated with the work of Nikos Polansis. This first approach, the instrumental Marxist perspective, argues that politicians, here we have Barack Obama, are simply the tools of the ruling class, the capitalist ruling class. So from this perspective, if the wealthy tell the government to jump, the government's answer would be how high. They are simply a tool of the ruling class. So politicians are just used by the ruling class to help them get their own way. And Ralph Miliband argued that within Britain, uh, this happens for a number of reasons. Firstly, if we look at the background of both the political elites and the economic elites, there's a great deal of overlap. So if we look at the composition of the current cabinet, the majority of cabinet ministers are millionaires, and also a majority of cabinet ministers have been educated privately at elite public schools. So from the instrumental Marxist perspective, this means that these politicians in key leadership positions are going to identify with the interests of the capitalist class. 
Moreover, the other thing that leads to integration of political and economic elites is the constant swapping of roles. So, for example, on retirement, senior civil servants and politicians often get highly paid jobs in the private sector. And they're often able to become personally very wealthy through exploiting the contacts and the knowledge that they have of the political system. And this practice is generally referred to as the revolving door. And this cartoon illustrates the revolving door as it applies to the American political system. But there's also evidence for a similar revolving door within British politics. For example, when Tony Blair stopped being Prime Minister, uh, one of the jobs that he got uh, when he left public office was to become uh, a senior advisor to Morgan Stanley, the world's biggest investment bank. And Marxists would argue that this makes it more likely that politicians such as Tony Blair will act in the interests of capitalist organisations such as investment banks rather than the public interest. So to conclude, the instrumental Marxist perspective argues that the state is simply a tool used by the ruling class to get their own way. There is however another Marxist perspective that we need to look at, the structuralist perspective, which is associated with the work of Nikos Palancis. So Palancis disputed the idea that the state was simply a tool or instrument of the ruling class. Like a dog on a long leash, within capitalism the state has a degree of independence, or to use Palancis's term, the state is relatively autonomous. Ironically, Palancis also argued that this relative autonomy actually helped to maintain capitalism in the long term. And the reason for this is he believed that it enabled the state to balance the interests of different sections of the ruling class, whilst at the same time, when needed, to grant concessions to the working class. So some moderate redistribution of wealth, some form of welfare state, might be important concessions that are granted to working class people to keep them locked into the capitalist system. And therefore in the long term the relative autonomy of the state actually helps the ruling class to maintain their hegemony, their dominance over society and it may help to prevent the working class from forming revolutionary movements that would actually challenge the capitalist structure. So from this perspective maybe a moderate left of centre government uh, willing to give some concessions to working class people um, is possibly better at maintaining capitalism in the long term than a right-wing government. Now if you get a 45 mark question on the Marxist theory it's not enough simply to describe the theory you've also got to be able to evaluate it. And perhaps the most effective way of doing this is to draw upon the other theories of power that we've looked at during the course, uh, elite theory and pluralism, and think about how these theories might challenge and criticise the core assumptions of Marxism. For example, classical elite theorists would not share the optimism that Marxists have for revolutionary social change. And Robert Michaels, of course, coined the term the iron law of oligarchy to get across this idea that rule by an oligarchy, a small group, a small elite, was inevitable in all types of societies, even those societies that had undergone a revolution. Uh, both elite theorists and pluralists would also accuse the Marxist perspective of economic determinism. And they would argue that there are many examples of important political struggles that can't easily be reduced to the politics of class and capitalism. And maybe the use of new technologies, the internet, wireless communications might be making it easier for groups without many resources, without much money, to have more of an influence on the political process than the Marxist theory allows for. To find out more about the Marxist theory and to build upon the notes that you've taken from this screencast, please have a look at the Power Revisited handout 
that has a lot more depth and detail on this perspective.